this will be a sober and somber assessment of the situation on the ground. I remain deeply mindful of the profound responsibility the international community bears in addressing the tragedy of this war. Nearly a year has passed since the horrific attack, terror attack by Hamas and other Palestinian armed group, groups against Israel on October 7th, which claimed 1,250 Israeli and foreign lives and led to the abduction of around 250 hostages. At least 101 hostages are reported to be still alive and still held in Gaza. They are still denied humanitarian visits. All hostages must be released immediately and unconditionally. For as long as they are held in accordance with international legal obligations, they must be treated humanely and allowed to receive visits and assistance from the International Committee of the Red Cross. The essence of our common humanity is at stake. In Gaza, more than 41,000 Palestinians have been killed and over 93,000 have been injured. Recent data from the World Health Organization estimate that more than 22,000 people have sustained life-altering injuries severe limb injuries between 13 to 17,000, often resulting in amputation. These are a sad reflection of the tragedy of this war. Many of those injured have more than one injury. The health infrastructure, already crippled, has been further decimated. At least 625 children remain out of school, children whose futures are marred by trauma, loss and deprivation. Every parent hopes for a better, more prosperous future for their children. In Gaza, this universal parental desire is dimmed by the grim realities of destruction and hopelessness. Mr. President, time is slipping away as a man-made humanitarian crisis has turned Gaza into the abyss. It cannot be repeated enough. We need an immediate ceasefire, the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages and unimpeded, continuous humanitarian access to deliver aid at scale throughout the Gaza Strip. The continued lack of effective protection for civilians in Gaza is unconscionable. The infrastructures that civilians rely on must be protected and their essential needs met. As the Secretary General has reiterated, all parties must refrain from using schools, shelters or the areas around these for military purposes. All parties to the conflict must comply with international humanitarian law at all times. Equally, humanitarian workers need an enabling environment to ensure unimpeded and safe access to people in need. Tragically, in Gaza, nowhere is safe. Mr. President, diseases like the polio virus had been consigned to history in the Gaza Strip. They've now reappeared due to the collapse of essential services. Following the detection of the virus, the Israeli authorities immediately engaged with my team. Following intensive coordination, the first round, the first round of a two-round vaccination campaign led by WHO, UNRWA and UNICEF has successfully been completed. The second phase of the vaccination campaign should commence in approximately four weeks. I visited Gaza, as I regularly do, a week and a half ago. Agreed pauses in fighting allowed parents and children to safely visit health centers and clinics, providing them with a very brief glimpse of relief and respite. The polio campaign shows that even in the direst of circumstances, with sufficient political will and real-time political commitment, humanitarian action is possible. The polio campaign equally underscored the vital role UNRWA plays, not only in accordance with its mandate, but also as a critical, trusted partner in the social fabric of Gaza and as the backbone of our humanitarian operations. Mr. President, the outbreak of polio is also a stark reminder of the desolate conditions of life in the Gaza Strip. Given the ongoing hostilities, the lack of a proper enabling environment, effective deconfliction and timely implementation of commitments made the UN and partners remain constrained in their ability to address this catastrophic situation. Mr. President, taking one step back, 11 months ago, Gaza was largely cut off from most of its supply lines with all but one access point closed. When Security Council Resolution 2720 was adopted in December last year, it was not foreseen that the war would rage on for this long without a ceasefire. In this context, and despite the complexity of the situation, my mission has negotiated and strengthened supply lines and systems, 
as well as additional routes with the intent to facilitate, accelerate and expedite in a sustained and transparent manner the flow of supplies into Gaza. These routes cover supplies from or via Egypt, Jordan, Cyprus, the West Bank and Israel. This required streamlining of intricate logistics and relevant regulations. The Executive Director of UNOPS under Secretary General Jorge Moreira da Silva will update you on the operationalization of the mechanism. Mr. President, systems in place today are not a substitute for the political will required to reach civilians and respond to their needs. Systems do not save lives, nor provide dignity for those who have lost all. Effective humanitarian operations require the right quality, quantity and a broad range of goods to meet the daily needs of civilians in Gaza. That goal is not being met. Ongoing hostilities across the Strip, the breakdown of law and order and looting of supplies are additional significant impediments to the UN's ability to distribute assistance to the Palestinian population in Gaza. Furthermore, the operating conditions for humanitarian workers include denials, delays, a lack of safety and security, and poor logistical infrastructure. This continues to hamper relief operations despite recent approvals provided for trucks, satellite phones, and other equipment. My mission continues to engage on these vital issues with a view to seek immediate redress. Commitments and intentions need to be translated into tangible actions on the ground. Any delay in implementation comes at direct cost of human lives. This Council is fully aware of the asks of the humanitarian community. I will highlight a few critical areas. One, my mission continues to focus on securing access to Gaza for a diverse range of goods from the humanitarian as well as commercial sector. Modest progress in select areas such as waste and sewage management has been made. However, this does not address the totality of needs. For example, the need for cash, pre-positioned adequate volume in fuel, and hygiene items are urgently needed. The scope of humanitarian items allowed entry remains too restricted for effective humanitarian operations. Furthermore, the United Nations itself also urgently needs the entry of further vital security communications and tracking equipment in order to work in Gaza. With regard to coordination and deconfliction, a joint coordination board is operational. Recent security incidents, including shootings at humanitarian convoys, are unacceptable and demonstrate that agreed protocols and procedures still need comprehensive, on-time implementation. The recent medical evacuation of 251 patients and family members, in this case to the United Arab Emirates, the largest so far, is a good development. However, much more is needed. Over 14,000 patients require specialized treatment outside of the Gaza Strip. And I would like to use this opportunity to call on all member states to extend their solidarity by hosting these patients and their families. Progress on the above becomes even more important as winter nears and the humanitarian catastrophe deepens. The UN team on the ground continues to coordinate with the Israeli authorities to ensure the implementation of a winterization plan. Mr. President, humanitarian assistance is only a temporary pathway to alleviate suffering. A comprehensive, just and lasting peace in the Middle East can only be realized through a two-state solution and the achievement of an independent, democratic, contiguous, viable and sovereign Palestinian state, living side by side in peace and security within secure and recognized borders with Israel, whose legitimate security concerns must be addressed. In this light, the recovery and reconstruction of Gaza should not wait, and you've heard me say this before. As much as political conditions will dictate the pace and nature of this process, children need to learn, they need to be in school, healthcare needs to be provided to all, housing, refurnishing, rebuilding, it needs to start. It's important that governance and security arrangements are established without further delay. And the UN's position is clear. The Palestinian Authority must resume its full responsibilities in Gaza and Prime Minister um, Mohammed Mustafa's cabinet has developed comprehensive plans to restore local governance, security and re-establish the rule of law. International planning efforts of the UN, the EU, 
the World Bank and others are ongoing in support of the Palestinian Authority. And my mission has further developed financing options for the international community to consider. Rebuilding Gaza offers an opportunity to involve all members of Palestinian civil society, fostering a conducive environment that enables the Palestinian business community to play its role is equally important. Palestinian businessmen and women, investors have the drive, the knowledge and the commitment to contribute in a meaningful way. Mr. President, over the past 10 months, my mission has fostered partnerships. It has enhanced coordination amongst member states, UN agencies and the many humanitarian partners. The 2720 team has continuously engaged on issues of access, addressed obstacles and proposed solutions to enable assistance by all humanitarian partners, including, and it goes without saying, UNRWA. My mission has proposed solutions to overcome political and operational impediments, maintaining a lean, agile and efficient, efficient operations through a hybrid model with UNOPS and seconded experts from certain agencies. Routes have been established and systems are in place and proposals have been made to the parties concerning the option to reopen the Rafah border crossing. This is just one of the many examples. But despite these continuous efforts, the only credible measure of change and progress are the actual conditions on the ground in Gaza. And the horrors of the past 11 months have made it painfully clear that a political solution is the only sustainable path forward. Without a political solution, the cycle of suffering will continue. And in the face of the tragedy that befell innocent civilians, our shared humanity demands we respond with compassion and humility. We have a responsibility to provide protection and aid, remaining steadfast in our duty to advocate for a lasting peace, a secure Israel and a fully independent, viable and sovereign Palestinian state. Thank you.